it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. Well, tonight is the night that we're going to have a Bible story. Well, we've been reading a lot about King Nebuchadnezzar. And if you remember last week, he had made a giant idol. I'll remind you what that idol looked like. It was, it was huge compared to the people. And he commanded that everybody bow down when the music played and worship that idol. But there were three that did not do it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three Hebrew slaves. So, let's see what happens next. Only a few people close to the royal enclosure could see and hear what happened next. But everybody tried to. While the great golden image still towered above the crowds, the people tried to catch a glimpse of the three young men who would dare to defy the king. Many a little boy, I'm sure, climbed on his daddy's shoulder to get a better look at what was going on. Is it true? asked Nebuchadnezzar of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Don't you serve my gods? And don't you plan on worshiping the golden idol I've set up? And then he offered him one more chance. I'm going to have the music played again. And this time, I expect you to bow down and worship at the great statue that I have built. If you don't, You'll be thrown into the fiery furnace and burnt until you die. Now, they could see that furnace and they could see the smoke coming out of it. And of course, they did not want to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they could have, you know, said, okay, we'll do it. And then whisper to each other, but we really aren't worshiping. We'll just make him think we are. But no, they weren't going to compromise. That means they weren't going to shortchange God's word. They remembered in the Ten Commandments that there had been one of the laws that said, Thou shalt not make unto yourself any graven image and you shall not bow down yourselves to them, nor serve them. And they decided they needed to obey God rather than man. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, they said respectfully, our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the flames. And out of your hands, O oh king, but even if he doesn't, we will serve him and we will not bow down to that image. At this, the king became furious and he said, heat up that furnace. Heat it seven times hotter than ever before. And so some of his people began throwing in more fuel. And they had something called a billows, and it would hold air, almost like a balloon, and they could pump more air into it and it would shoot it out. And that, because um, fire needs fuel and it needs oxygen, so it would have more fuel and more oxygen so it could get hotter and hotter. And the servants all ran to do exactly what he said. Meanwhile, the king had the strongest men come and they tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with ropes. Hotter and hotter the fire grew until the whole royal party could hear the, feel the heat of it. Hmm. Now there was another problem. Nobody could get near the furnace because it was so hot. But the king was angry and he said to those Strong men, I said, throw them in now. Well, they did. And when they did, 
they fell down and they died from the heat. It was so terrible, the strong man. But then somebody saw something in the furnace moving and they said, I, I see something. It's, it's a man. No, two, two, three. No, there's four men in there. And the king got close enough that he could see. He saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the flames. And the fourth man appeared to be the son of God. Now, I'm not sure how he knew that. Somehow he did. And he said, I see four men now, and they're loose, walking around in the fire, and they aren't even hurt. Forgetting his royal dignity and forgetting all the tens of thousands of people who were watching, Nebuchadnezzar got off his throne and he hurried down as close to the furnace as he could get. And he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth, come on out of there. And they did. And they were not burnt in any way. Their clothes wasn't even scorched. All the fire had burnt up were the ropes that had tied them. I'll show you a picture of that now. Everyone crowded around to see the astonishing sight. And the princes, governors, captains, all the king's counselors gathered together and saw the man upon whose body the fire had no power. Not a hair of their, on their head was singed. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. As for Nebuchadnezzar, he was, he was overwhelmed. He never said another word about the great idol he had built. But instead he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted him. And he changed the king's word. They yielded their bodies that they might not worship any god except their own. Therefore, I'm making a new law that people in every person in the nation, nations and languages, Anyone who speaks against their God will be killed and their houses will be like rubble. In fact, they'll be like a dung heap. Do you know what dung is? Poop. Because there is no other God. There is none that can deliver the way that their God delivered them and saved them. It was a wonderful new law. God used it to cheer the hearts of all the people in the days of their captivity. It must have been a comfort to them to know he was willing to walk into the fire with those three faithful men. And you know what? He's there for you. Anytime. He'll walk through any problems with you. Just depend on him. Stand up. Let people know you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Father God above. Trust him. Well, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I'll have another Bible story in a couple days. I want to pray blessings on you and yours in your house and out of your house. In the day and the night, whatever you do, keep dreaming. Good night.